Mike here, coming at you from the Mushroom Farm, and I got a great video for you guys tonight. So tonight we're going to talk about what I feel was the most controversial mushroom to grow during 2025. So I'm going to tell you guys kind of my experience as a mushroom farmer, what I believe was the most controversial mushroom to grow this year, and there's a few good reasons for that. And I want to say if you're new and you're just now tuning into this channel, my name's Mike. I'm a mushroom farmer. I've been farming gourmet mushrooms nine years full time. Here's just a few shots of some of my grows over the years, but I basically grow all these mushrooms here on my farm, and I sell them at farmers markets and to high-end restaurants. We have over 270 videos on mushroom farming and mushroom cultivation on this channel. I'm doing daily uploads and monthly subscriber giveaways. So if you're into mushrooms and farming, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. But anyway, on to tonight's video, like I said, the most controversial mushroom to grow during 2025, the Pleurotus citrino pileatus, the golden oyster mushroom. We're going to cover this one, and I'm just going to talk about the controversial aspect of this mushroom and what my thoughts are on growing this mushroom going forward in the future. Why is the golden oyster mushroom considered a controversial mushroom? to grow going into 2026 here at the end of 2025 and basically it is because the golden oyster is actually considered an invasive species of mushrooms here in the United States or in North America all right now the story behind this let me just kind of explain the story and I'll tell you guys my thoughts about this the story behind this is basically the golden oyster is native to Asia okay and as gourmet mushroom cultivation got a little more widespread and cultivators over here in the United States started cultivating the golden oyster mushroom more people supposedly started seeing it popping up more in nature and just started seeing it more of it in nature growing over the years now whether or not it was truly related to mushroom growers we really have no idea it's just, it's all speculative i must say right now okay but some people think the growers over here in the united states have definitely caused an increase in the population that is naturally occurring here in the united states or in north america and like i said this is not a naturally occurring species here in north america now let me just talk about my thoughts about this a little bit more Okay, so I'm going to share with you guys my perspective right now on cultivating the golden oyster mushroom going forward in my farm and kind of what some other growers are doing. And I want to say watch this full video too in entirety just so you get the full perspective of this too, just so you get a good idea for yourself because really it's up to you as the grower whether or not you want to grow the golden oyster mushroom. I feel like maybe there are some areas, maybe depending on the scale of your farm, it could impact your area, but also there may be some areas it won't impact it at all. And then in the grand scheme of things though, I don't really think it's going to impact it at all anyway. So anyway, allow me to explain my thoughts here. So anyway, just as a mushroom grower, there have been several other mushroom growers that have just decided to drop golden oyster mushroom entirely from their cultivation lineup. And it's all because of this whole thing about the invasive th thing. And I think it's just because it's gotten so much media attention. First of all, just like the name invasive, it's such a trigger word. Like if you think about it, there's and there's a lot of other words like that. Like if you just put that word in a sentence, it sets people off, okay? And then there's gonna be that one person or that one select group of people out there that are really gonna be super sensitive about that whole measure. And yeah, it is what it is. But let me just tell you guys something. So people worried about the invasive aspect of this. The cat is already out of the bag. That is the best analogy to use, okay? And there is no way we are gonna stop this thing, okay? And just the nature of the beast, okay? So just mushrooms in general, just the growing nature of mushrooms. Remember, okay, the vegetative network, the mycelium, is going to be in a wood substrate or in like a log or a tree of some kind when it comes to the golden oyster. So we don't even see the mushroom, okay, or, or the vegetative network at all. All we see is trees, logs, that's all we know. That mushroom is only going to pop up for a few, few select weeks out of the year, you know what I mean, when it's actually producing the mushroom fruiting bodies in the wild and that's when it's going to be releasing its spores and able to reproduce and actually put more spores out into the atmosphere and then more mushrooms will grow so what i'm basically getting at is we can't even see where these things are until they pop up and then you only have a few days and they're releasing billions trillions quadrillions numbers i can't even count that's how many spores are going out into the atmosphere from the naturally occurring wild population, okay? So basically there's this thing, it's just gonna pop up. We have no idea where, no idea when, okay? And they're gonna release billions, trillions, and quadrillions of extra little DNA information so they can reproduce more, all right? And they're gonna go all over the atmosphere. How are we going to stop that, okay? Do you truly think a small grower, especially one guy, like, you know, there's a lot, a lot of small um, boutique gourmet mushroom growers are just growing out of their basement, 
grown out of a couple grow tents, okay? S some of them are barely cracking 100 pounds a week, okay? And if you're doing like just a couple pounds of golden oyster in the mix of your other mushrooms, you are not putting a dent in anything, man, okay? If, if you are gonna choose to not cultivate the golden oyster mushroom. Now, I will say there are some areas they're saying that it is displacing the local fun fungi or fungi that is already there. And I do understand that perspective, okay? But it might just be nature running its course, first of all, okay? Because it's kind of like survival of the fittest. It's one of those things where, like I said, we're not going to be able to stop it just because there's so many spores getting out into the atmosphere. One single mushroom cap, just one single cap can release trillions of spores. So just imagine what a cluster of mushrooms can be released. Those are so many spores that are getting out in the atmosphere. It's crazy. So just the wild population, like I said, there's so many already pre-existing out there. I think it's a little too late, guys. And there's no way we would have ever been able to round it up to begin with, like I said, because you can never see the vegetative network because it's always in the log. And then the actual mushroom, when it's going to release its spores, it's only popping up for a few days. So there's no way you can track that thing down in all these different forests all over the world. It's just not going to happen. So I feel like the guys, they're kind of like choosing to not cultivate it. They're either like hopping on the non-cultivation bandwagon. And I will say there's a few reasons why it is a little tougher to cultivate golden oyster as a farmer anyway, just to be profitable as a farmer. For one, the shelf life on the golden oyster is a little bit shorter. They aren't as like strong and meaty as blue oyster mushrooms, king oysters, or lion's mane, you know what I mean? They get a little more beat up when they're just being transported around and stuff like that. The caps are really fragile, really easy just to crack and break. So just like the shelf life and the fragility of the mushroom are two reasons right there, kind of to de deter a farmer from cultivating it, especially at scale. When you get into these big scale farms, kind of like I'm like a small to medium scale farmer, okay? Because like me, myself, I'm usually growing around 200 pounds a week of gourmets myself when I'm in the middle of the season. This year, we may push up close to 400 pounds a week, okay? So we're getting a little higher in the numbers ourselves over here but overall depending on the scale of the farm sometimes some of these larger farms there are just other reasons in general why they want to stop cultivating mushrooms and i'll just say like i said due to the low shelf life and the fragility of the golden oyster mushroom at super large commercial scale honestly it doesn't make too much sense anyway anyways i will say at like small scale grows okay if you're doing like farmers markets like me like i said i grow about two to four hundred pounds a week max and I sell mainly at farmer's markets and to high-end restaurants. The golden oyster is great to have at the farmer's market because it's like such an eye catcher, okay? So has like really this nice, vibrant, golden, yellow color, really attracts people over to come check out your stand and just kind of like check out your mushrooms. The visual aspect of being at the farmer's market is huge, okay? And like just the fact that like have a guy like me going to the farmer's market selling the quality and caliber, caliber of mushrooms that I do is such an awesome thing to have in the community. You know what I mean? Everybody enjoys it so much. I feel like it's a shame for someone like me to stop cultivating the golden oyster mushroom just because somebody doesn't think it's cool in one certain area. You know what I mean? So anyway, I'm going to continue to grow the golden oyster mush mushroom just because I am a small scale farmer. And like I said, I mainly sell mine at farmer's markets and I do not think I'm putting a dent into the wild population whatsoever. I don't think I'm causing any future problems or anything like that. And I also want to say in my specific region here, let's talk about specific regions and habitats a little bit too. So I am actually in a high desert region out here in Colorado. Mushrooms out here anyway are super scarce. So if I create some type of invasive mushroom problem out here, I'm probably doing something good out here for the ecosystem to tell you the truth, okay? So um, out here, there is definitely no problem with it whatsoever. I do wanna say where there is an issue kind of being reported or where there's a lot of these golden oyster mushrooms being found is in the Michigan area, okay? I'll say, so for whatever reason, around like the Great Lakes, Michigan area, there's a whole lot of these Pleurotus citrino pileatus popping up around that region. So if you have like a massive commercial scale farm or something like that, you could somewhat say that, hey, you don't wanna continue to create the problem there. But I also will say the problem is already so bad there, it almost doesn't matter anyway. So like, I mean, once again, the cat is already out of the bag. So um, yeah, I think even if I had a big mushroom farm, even in Michigan, like I think it's so bad already, guys, I don't think it even matters. But um, that's like I said, that's just my perspective on it. And I also wanna add, okay, as an avid forager, okay, I have spent many years foraging mushrooms in the wild, okay? Here's just a few clips of uh, some of my mushroom picking adventures. I, I've done a lot of morel mushroom foraging over the years. I know we got a lot of morel mushroom pickers on this channel and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, so when I got into mushroom farming, I was a forager, okay? I really enjoy going out in the woods and just 
observing mushrooms, picking mushrooms, finding good edibles to eat and stuff like that. I really like finding the edibles, okay? Who doesn't like to eat some good wild mushrooms? So anyway, well, here's what I want to kind of get at here. Just with my over nine, and I've been foraging mushrooms like my entire life for the most part, only been cultivating nine years, but like, believe it or not, guys, growing up in Southern Illinois, and I lived in Southern Illinois for 35 years or so. Yeah, about, yeah, I'd say about 35 years. And uh, before I moved out here to Western Colorado, I never saw one single golden oyster mushroom, okay? So all of my years of foraging experience, okay? And if you guys have not been over like to my Instagram or you, if you haven't been following me for years or whatever, check out my Instagram. You guys can see I've spent a lot of time out foraging and stuff like that over the years when I was in the Midwest region. I'm not foraging as much anymore out here in the high desert region of Colorado just because we don't have as many wild mushrooms out here to pick. It's really short, narrow window of a season. So I, and uh, this last year was like an extreme drought, so I didn't really go out much at all. But what I will say, like I said, in my years of experience foraging the Midwest in Southern Illinois, just the fact that north, just slightly north, even in Northern Illinois, there have been plenty of golden oysters found, like I said, in Michigan, stuff like that. But me in Southern Illinois, with many years of foraging experience, never saw a single one, never once, not once. So didn't seem to like invasive to me. If I would have found the golden oyster, it would have been like finding the unicorn, man. So like I will say, it's not as widespread and in every area as what some people say it is, okay? So like just like anything else on the internet, some people will make a way bigger deal about it than what it is and try to get you to jump on the bandwagon and do this and that. But number one, just you do you, you do what you think is right for your situation. For me, I'll say going forward, I'm gonna continue to cultivate the golden oyster mushroom here on my farm because like I said, I don't think it's causing any problems. I think it's a great mushroom to have at my farmer's markets. I think it's a beautiful mushroom to grow. I like selling it to people and sharing it to people. A lot of people just enjoy buying the mushroom from me and having it to bring home themselves and experience it. And I will say too, just the fact, like I said, it is an edible mushroom. At least this is an invasive species that is edible. So when they do pop up in the forest, okay, for those regions that are lucky enough, I feel like to go out and pick them because like I said, I've never even found one, okay? So for those people that can go out and pick them where they are an invasive problem, at least you guys have an abundant food source. Now I wanna say, cool fun fact, okay? So uh, the Amanita phylloides, okay, the death cat mushroom, the death cat mushroom, okay, the Amanita phylloides, it is actually an invasive species as well. So lo and behold, we have this invasive species over here that no one is talking about, okay? No one is talking about this at all, but it can kill you, all right? But everybody is concerned about this edible one and thinks some of these mushroom cultivators are causing problems out here growing this golden oyster mushroom, right? But no one seems to worry about this Amanita phylloides death cat mushroom that's just popped up and invasive to North America and could potentially kill you. So keep in mind, okay, so there are invasive mushrooms out there that can definitely kill you that no one's even freaking talking about. And then we have invasive mushrooms like the golden oyster or the Pleurotus citrino pileatus is getting a little more attention. but. Definitely, it's a great food source, okay? Now, I wanna say just me being out here in Western Colorado, we have the Blue Mesa Reservoir uh, nearby me. It's a really big lake that people can go and fish at and stuff like that. And there's, there's some invasive uh, fish here. One of the invasive fish we have here is the perch, okay, um, the perch fish. And I have caught some, I haven't caught a whole bunch of these. I've caught mainly more trout out here and stuff like that. I did more bass fishing and uh, bluegill and catfish and stuff like that back when I was in Southern Illinois. But here they have perch in a lot of these lakes and um, they are actually invasive in these lakes. And I, I will say there's even a fishing guide, a local fishing guide here. He caught like 200 of these perch out of the lake the other day. And could, there's no limits on them because they're invasive, okay? And then people were all up in this giant uproar because this guy had 200 perch, but it's completely legal. They want them out of the lake, stuff like, and you're, there's no way you're gonna fish them all out, okay? But somebody's always gonna have a problem with something, okay? So that's just kind of what I'm getting at. I don't really think there's a problem with cultivating the golden oyster mushroom. Um, and worrying about the invasive aspect. Like I said, if you want to particularly not cultivate it yourself, you do you, I'm gonna keep doing me. And, um, but like I said, I think it's a great edible mushroom and we should just think about kind of what are the pros about this right now. We can definitely go out in the woods and go pick a nice edible from time to time knowing there is a little more of abundance of this one species of mushrooms. But like I said, it's only in certain areas. But anyway guys, hopefully you got some good information out of this video. Probably got a lot of questions for me and all that good stuff. If you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to drop it down below in that comment section. I will answer all your questions and I will probably even make you a video, but hopefully you guys found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, please drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, but that's all I got for you on this one. And I will catch you guys on the next one.